I was just like, like mouth agape, eyes wide, like <laughs> I did it. Like, you know, it was, it wasn't anything. I thought I would cry or something, but I was just like, that happened. I, I'm, yeah. I'm done. Like I'm done. Um, it was, and then I danced, you know, had a little dance party after, I think it was like 10 or midnight or something. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a journey. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the CPA Exam Experience podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's interview, you're going to hear me talk with Janice. So in Janice's story, she started the CPA about 10 years ago when she was just out of school. She was working in a big four firm, working a lot of hours, working on really big clients, and she just never fully got into the study process and then changed jobs or her outlook kind of changed to where for a few years she felt like she probably wouldn't need the CPA. Then it got to the point recently where she changed her mind back to needing the CPA and she researched online. She found super fast CPA or saw one of our ads. So she watched the free training before she started studying again and the ideas on the training, the different strategies made a lot of sense to her. And from there, she got our program, applied the strategies, and now she's on the podcast. So you will hear the things she learned from this time around, passing the CPA exams really quickly, spending less time overall studying, making the study process easier compared to the first time around where, you know, she was following the traditional study method where she was trying to watch every lecture, read the chapter, etc. So before we get into the interview with Janice, I want to mention two things. First, the free training webinar. So like pretty much every other interview with Janice, that's the first thing she saw from Superfast CPA. And if you're wondering where to start or even wondering about Superfast CPA, that is the best place for you to start because in a one hour webinar, we walk through our core study strategies. So the six pillars or the six key ingredients for a successful CPA study process that is much different will save you time and is much easier once you get the process figured out compared to the traditional study method. So the link to that training will be down in the description of this episode, both on the podcast version and the YouTube version. The second thing is our free podcast giveaway. So each month we give away three pairs of Powerbeat Pro headphones to three random listeners who have entered the giveaway. It's just your name and email. And again, the link to that will also be down in the description. So with that out of the way, let's get into the interview with Janice. Let's see, Pacific time, where are you located? I'm located in Los Angeles, out in California. Nice. Have you ever been to Salt Lake? I have, yeah. Um, I've done a lot of skiing out in that area. Skiing okay. and snowboarding. <laughs> All right, sweet. Yeah, me too. Um, Do you ski or snowboard? Ski. Well, I snowboard. I always snowboarded since high school. Okay. And then uh, a few years ago, probably five, five or six years ago, I just switched mm -hmm. because I kept thinking these like three things. I hated getting stuck when it was flat. Um, I liked the idea of yeah. like pointing forward instead of twisting, that. looking forward. And, uh, what was the other thing? Just having to sit down every time you get off the lift, you know, that's fair to strap in. Um, I, so you bored, I, I guess I'm guessing. Yeah. I figured out that system. I don't sit down when I strap in. Um, but I wanted to try Alta, Alta, um, I think that's just the full name in, in Utah, but they only allow skis Go, or yep. skiers. And so <clears> I was like, all right, well, I'm going to put on some skis and check it out. And it was really cool. I saw a lot of people, um, a lot, meaning like four or five people skiing with their babies, like either in front or in the back. Just <laughs> going that's, on the beginning. That is so and crazy. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Like what if something, I don't know. I, I mean, I've seen people doing that. Um, yeah, it's like a religion. It's like the second predominant religion here, just skiing. <laughs> um, yeah, but 
I've seen that, and I, I mean, I would never do that. Yeah, so. I don't think I could either. <clears throat> Definitely not snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. The other thing was, I felt like I was pretty good at snowboarding, but I would still just catch an edge once in a while, like oh, on yeah. relatively flat ground, and just bang my head off the ground, you know, and oh, no. <laughs> with skiing, I just never crash. I mean, I don't do anything risky. Um, I don't go off jumps. You know, I'm not getting paid to ski, so I don't do anything right. risky, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, I to be fair, you are facing forward. Like it's totally natural. It makes sense. It's probably mm -hmm. the easier of the two to pick up if it's your first time, but, um, I totally get that. Yeah. And then I don't know, I like, I know there are types of snowboards and everything, but I got, um, I learned to ski on just some basic skis and then I bought some expensive, like powder, all mountain skis. Um, and that was, it was insane how different that is. Yeah, um, whereas, you know, I upgraded, upgraded snowboards through the years and it was always kind of just the same thing. Yeah. Anyways. All right. We, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll move on. So your, your little message was really enthusiastic that, uh, super fast CPA was hands down what made this all work. And then apparently when you posted this, you would only pass two, but now you've just in the last month or so, you've gotten back two other scores. Yeah. So you're um, all done. Almost, I'm all done. I'm in the process of getting the actual license. Um, yeah. But I'm done. I'm done with the exams. That's awesome. Well, congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So we'll just go, I guess, small time out. Have you listened to any of these other interviews? Do you kind of know how this goes? Totally. I okay. have probably all of them, I want to say. Um, okay. So, yeah, very good resource. <clears throat> yeah, it'll be exactly like those. Once we're kind of talking, we don't edit much from, like, the middle, the actual conversation. Mm -hmm. So if you've listened to previous ones, that's exactly how this will go. So, uh, so yeah. So let's just go back to the beginning. So when you started, did you have a period where it was just – the review course, doing things like the normal way. Um, did you do it like that at all? So if we want to go all the way back to the beginning, I actually initially started this journey almost 10 years ago now. Okay. Um, my first job out of college was at a big four firm. And of course they pushed getting the CPA really anywhere. Um, you know, if you studied accounting, they highly encourage you to get the CPA. So I did start working on that. Um, then, and it was very, it was very hard for me just because the client that I was on was one of our biggest clients. And I really, I was there from, you know, 8.30, 9 a.m. until 9 p.m., 10, and then like almost midnight during busy season. And everyone in my start class actually, that was on that client actually kept pushing out their exam. And at one point, I just wanted to take it to see what it was like. And I believe that was RAG. Um, and I did study the normal way, way back when. Um, definitely is a totally different way <laughs> from what I've studied now versus then. It's They're polar opposites, I feel like, because, you know, which makes sense. When you graduate college, you've taken these classes, you've been guided through these lectures, through the curriculum in a way that, you know, the teacher provides. And then for the CPA, you're on your own. You get your own materials. You got to figure it out. And, you know, I just kind of applied it uh, then when I first when I first graduated. And it just wasn't working for me. Um, I found that I enjoyed working with smaller clients, um, you know, more privately owned uh, companies, which I was able to kind of pivot and focus on and and the message that I got from each um, manager I'd, I'd worked with since then was you don't need your CPA um, you're not in public accounting you don't need it you don't need it so fast forward 10 years you know I'm like it makes sense for me now um, and in terms of studying now I, I started with reg again actually and I think I want to say I did start with the lectures. I started with the lectures, um, and I was like, you know, I I want to go about it a little differently this this time around. Um, it's not 
it's not something that I want to have to repeat. It's not something that I want to have to like miserably go through. And I want to say that I had remembered seeing super fast CPA or I think when it when I just started it, I was thinking of all of the materials, potential materials that were out there. I thought of super fast ninja Becker, you know, whatever it was. So I started doing my research about maybe one week into studying. By the way, I had just start us. Uh, I had just decided on getting my CPA not even a year ago. <laughs> okay. um, so the research was really, really quick. I was like, I want to get this done like ASAP. I don't want this, yeah. you know, dragged out. So I found super fast CPA. Um, I actually looked at the webinar and it made just so much sense. And I think from having the 10 year period or so in between working at different companies, you know, having different tasks and responsibilities and, and kind of being strategic about my time and then, you know, working with other people, managing other people, it just made so much sense. I know for a lot of people it does, but for me, I was like, this is, why didn't I see this? You know, when I yeah. was, uh, when I first graduated, I think this would have been really helpful. I bet some of the people that passed probably found super fast CPA and I just didn't know it at the time. Um, and so I went from looking at the lectures to switching over and looking at the questions first. And I think for Reg, that was my first one. I looked at the, the multiple choice question that was really awkward for me just kind of looking at the question trying to figure out what the answers are and then you know throughout the other three exams figuring out that it's okay to get those questions wrong at the you know <laughs> on, yeah. at the onset um i learned a lot from the explanations for rec for far that was a totally different story far I, <laughs> I used Becker. I felt like the explanations were a little bit lacking. They had the calculations, but it's like, okay, well, where did this number come from? I used academic support a lot for FAR. Um, but just going from the webinar and going through the questions first, you know, trying to figure out what, what it is that I'm trying to learn and then falling back on the lectures to see, to get more exposure, really. If there's an area that, you know, I... I wasn't really grasping that's kind of when I went back to the lecture um the actual lectures not the ones where it's underline and highlight and circle mm -hmm. um and it was really helpful that way I think for reg I passed that one on the first try um and I was using the multiple choice or the mini quizzes from the super fast CPA um, app and that was really helpful okay so um if you remember when you watched the free training and you said, you know, this makes so much more sense. Do you remember specifically what the different strategies or just what your uh, like aha moments were watching that? Yeah, it was three. I remember there were three points, one of which being, you know, like the multiple choice going through the questions first, because, oh, the aha moment for that was what are you spending your time on the exam doing? Yeah answering yeah. question mm -hmm. I was like duh we're not watching lectures and I've seen so many people you know in in forums or the Facebook groups talk about you know I'm not understanding the lectures or I don't like the lectures they're really boring let's say for one specific material and you know people start looking for supplements they want the lectures you know more engaging blah 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 and in my head I'm like wow that is so much time spent just on the lectures when you're ultimately going to be answering questions on the exam. And so it made sense that you want to get the exposure to that. And then it also made sense that, uh, or rather how people maybe had gone through taking their exam so quickly, just forego the lectures altogether. Um, and of course that, that might depend on your materials that you end up purchasing, making sure that they have um, good explanations so that you can learn from them. But it was just polarizing i think you know from my initial experience right out of college to you know now and i just i couldn't believe that like it was simple um simple to do it's just a matter of committing to it and i was actually passing i was you know <laughs> yeah like <laughs> that was a huge deal for me yeah definitely i mean um yeah there's several things I could comment on, but, uh, I guess first the, yeah, that idea of 
okay, what do you do on test day? And then work backwards from that. You know, mm-hmm. that it, as soon as you hear that, it sounds so obvious that yeah. it's almost, I don't know, so, too obvious <laughs> to point out. But that's not how most people spend most of their study time. Um, yeah. I almost wrote in my little note, I was like, it was stupid obvious, but I was like, I'm not going to write that. But it's so obvious that almost, you know, you know, I just, it was, it was an aha, but also like, duh moment. Um, and I'm sure that's because, you know, for a lot of people, when, when they first come across um, super fast CPA, maybe it is their first time taking the exam and, and they haven't had the exposure to it or they have. And then, you know, it depends on where I think people are coming from, which makes it that much better. Yeah. Um, yes. So that happens sometimes. Like I can tell usually from support emails, if someone hasn't even started the process and they're, Mm -hmm. they're like, so wait, you're saying don't watch the lecture. How can, I mean, what if I get the questions wrong? You know, like, and Yeah. yeah, it's just, okay, well you're not, you're not in the testing center, right? When you're studying, it it doesn't matter. You're using the questions as a learning tool, just like you are, or you would be the textbook. Like if you're reading the textbook, you don't have any ideas of, oh, how am I doing? Or I can't get this wrong. It's just, you're just using it as a learning tool. And uh, it's the direct context that you'll be seeing on test day. So anyways. I can attest to that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, so, okay. And going back to when you first, first started, I'm guessing you would, you know, watch the lecture, read the chapter. And it, even then it probably felt like you're spending all this time and you still just felt confused. Is that why it was such a big difference to just learn from the questions? One, yes. Um, again, right out of college, right? We're used to as students going sitting in a lecture physically uh, nowadays online so going through a lecture maybe reading from the textbook taking notes um, and then preparing for whatever exam is next and so really I just apply that to um, studying for the CPA exam which I'm sure a lot of us have Mm -hmm. and I think that the number one thing for me though was just the lack of time so begrudgingly trying to get myself to go through the lectures um and then for whatever reason not really grasping it or maybe maybe just i'm zonked out by the time i get to the lectures and and i'm not really retaining what i'm learning or what i just heard and i actually remember i think i went through an entire notebook of just my notes um pretty sure it was reg that i took at the time so i went through an entire notebook of you know just taking notes in a way that I could understand, maybe remember, I wanted to remember a bunch of stuff. And then today, I think I used half a 70 page notebook for all four exams, like after <laughs> going yeah. through the, um, the, the not, not only the webinar, but the, I purchased um, the, the mini course and whatnot. I, I was like, I changed the way that I went through my notes or took notes rather. Um, which was super helpful in audit. That was the third, the third one that I took. So I'd figured out um, my process throughout. But going back to when I first took it, it was just, it was just kind of miserable. <laughs> I was like, why mm-hmm. am I doing this? Um, and I really just didn't have time. And I think if I knew that there was a way to be strategic about it rather than just go through what they tell you i mean you're really setting up your own class schedule because this is self-study you're purchasing your own materials you don't have a teacher that's going to take you through okay the lectures this is what you need to do week one make sure that we get through this course like they do that for you and now we're being thrown into the cpa exams and studying for it we got to do that for ourselves and i think that's probably the hardest part um not the exams themselves, which may be controversial, but I think the hardest part is setting that um, those those study lessons for yourself in the beginning and then sticking to it throughout your journey. Yeah, absolutely. The, I mean, you've probably heard me say this a million times, but this whole thing determines on, or is determined by your daily process. It has 
very little to do with the exam day. Or, I mean, there's nothing you can really do on exam day to really like change your score that much, right? It's like, yeah. however prepared you are, obviously is determined by the last six weeks or whatever of what you did every day. Um, yeah. There's nothing magical you can do on exam day itself to score 10 points higher. So, um, yeah. so, okay. So you said, you mentioned time was like your biggest issue in the beginning. So mm -hmm. did you, uh, well, I guess first, did you, did you have our pro course videos? So after the webinar, yes. you went in and watched these videos that walk through the study process in more detail. Yes. Sorry. Okay. That's what it's called. The pro course videos. I did go through those. They were very, very helpful. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good to hear. Sounds like it worked. <laughs> um, so did you adopt the, like the two hour morning session then? I did for, um, so for reg, I did for far, I had to do it a little bit differently because the material, so many topics, the material is different. There are, I think you've mentioned like 200 plus topics in there. And as mm -hmm. I'm going through, I'm like, oh my gosh. He was absolutely right. There are so many topics in here. And so for that, I actually did um, I did the two hour in the morning. And then because uh, I did have a life outside of um, this, the studying for the CPA for the first two exams, for sure. For the last two, um, I kind of did it a little bit differently. But for Reg and Far, I, um, I did do the two hour chunk in the morning. That worked for reg that was all i needed for far because it was so many topics i did um i ended up doing i wanted to get three more modules so i did the two hour in the morning and then i believe it was monday wednesday i would do um one module in the morning one module in the afternoon so that my evenings would be off tuesday thursday i would just do the two hour chunk in the morning and then um i would climb in the evening and that was also my social hour my fun my fun time and then um, Fridays was op uh, was up to me. I would definitely do the two hour chunk in the morning if I felt like I wanted to get through not another module. I would in the afternoon. Otherwise, it's chill. Um, and that was for for far. There was a lot more to understand, a lot more calculations. You know, setting up journal entries. So I decided that that's what was going to work for me. Um, and I think I had about the same amount of time in terms of weeks <laughs> for both. Um, but I definitely broke it out differently for, for the two. Okay. So, okay. So on with reg, you did the two hours in the morning and then mm -hmm. you would kind of use our study tools or the app throughout the day. Yeah. I use the mini quizzes the most. Okay. Yeah. And so then you're basically done by the evening so you can yeah. just do whatever. And then with far, you said you basically did two hours in the morning and then just, yeah. uh, like an hour at night? Yeah, yeah, like right after work in the afternoon while I was still like, I made it kind of part of my work day versus, okay. you know, okay, I'm done with work. Um, I'm done with work and now I have to do this. So it's like not technically done with work. It's the end of the work day, but like I'm here for another hour. And then that way I could really transition into just enjoying the evening and not feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to go back and study again. Um, mentally, it was really helpful. I think, yeah, it was really helpful. Yeah, that's a good idea. I get so obviously you were back in the office, or I mean, you're working at the office while you're doing this. So I'm actually remote, oh, okay. um, but I'm very good about like separating the time that I set aside for gotcha. for studying um, because you know I got I got to do my work, and so I think having that separation and not feeling like I'm studying all day. Cause I tech, I guess, you know, really, if you're working remote, you could do the hours in the morning, something maybe for lunch and then be done with the day or some, you know, something in the afternoon or whatever. But then it just gets um, mixed throughout the day. And like, are you really studying at that point? You know, if you're going between work and study or are you really retaining anything at that point? Um, so I, I made it a point to just do the two hours in the morning, have my work day, and then the hour at the end, um, the additional hour at the end, I made as quote unquote part of my work day, but that was set aside for studying. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I, yeah. So yeah, you just you're done with work, but you're still sitting there at your desk. You go straight yeah. into that last hour, and then you can step away and just be like, "Yeah, I'm done with work and study." Yep. Exactly. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and it does. Uh, um, like you were mentioning, just being very intentional about this is study time. Like this is what I'm going to focus on for this hour or whatever, and then this is work time. And then if you've nailed it for the day, then you're done. So yeah. the next thing I was really going to ask you was uh, just so with FAR, two hours in the morning, one hour in the evening, what were you actually doing for the two hours and then the one hour after? I was focused on learning, getting through each of the modules because I realized, you know, um, going into FAR that there's many, many modules. Um, and so I was like, okay, the only way I'm going to get through this is to really, um, assign, basically assign myself an outline, right? Cause in, uh, in college, you don't, your, your teacher does that for you. Your professor does that for you, you know, lays out the outline and everything and, and you're guided through the class, the lectures, you know, the materials and everything. So really I was doing that for myself, um, for far, because I noticed that it was, a lot more topics than in reg. And so I said, okay, I think I gave myself an extra week or two on top of reg. I think I may have taken seven weeks for reg. Um, and so for far, I realized that there was an extra, I think two more um, units in the back, at least under Becker. So I was like, okay, I need an extra week or two to get through those. And then getting into the material, I realized, oh, um, <laughs> there's a lot more topics than I expected. So I, I need to actually break this down a little bit more. And I focused on learning in the morning. And then if there was kind of a, because you know how there's some modules that are just like 15 questions or whatever, um, mm -hmm. you kind of get an idea of, of like what's important based on the number of questions there are, how long the lecture is. And so for those smaller modules, I would assign that to the hour in the afternoon or evening. And then um, otherwise I would do, that was when I would do the 30 um, question. So in the beginning, I did the 30 multiple choice questions, cumulative review. And then toward the end, I actually did it a little differently and it worked really, really well for me, which was just um, 15 multiple choice questions from one whole uh, unit and then 15 multiple choice questions from the same unit using adapt to you under Becker. So it's just like mm -hmm. instead of random, it's personalized to you. Um, and that worked really, really well. It worked great for BEC, which I had less than three weeks to study um, the end of it all because, because my NGS was expiring. Um, yeah, but going back to FAR, I actually lost a week of studying. I lost my review week because I had to travel um, for work. And which is a bummer because my first go, I, I, um, I had a 74. And I was really mm. bummed about it because I was like, oh, that review, like I laid it out. Yeah, that really, totally really well. made the difference. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, that made the difference. Um, and I actually didn't move on, even though I knew my process for reg, updated it for far. I actually didn't move on to audit because I just felt like, I don't know, it just did not feel good. I think I was almost really frustrated in the exam probably almost in tears but then i realized they record it or like they watch you and i'm like you need to get yourself together you cannot be doing this in the middle of the exam you need to get the, you haven't even finished the second uh what is it test let you got to get through the yeah. simulation yeah so it's like you got to hype yourself up in the middle of, of the exam when you're feeling this kind of way um and so yeah did not feel great about that because i was just like oh i hadn't you know i like i lost that week i really needed that week to review um but i also i, I think i went through the uh the stages of grief like angry like you're in denial <laughs> and you're like you mm -hmm. want to uh contest the 74 because it's yeah, like is it really yeah. like could i you know but I learned that it's not like it's really not worth it, um, especially when you can just jump back on and do it again. Um, you know, it costs a lot of money to even to contest it. You're waiting for them to do it. And I don't think they even I think they just recheck it like they don't even do anything. Extra. Yeah. 
They basically yeah. say like we don't we don't make mistakes, so you can yeah. <laughs> contest it if you want. But they say something like we've changed, you know, we've changed a score twice in our entire history yeah. or something like that. Like yeah, yeah, so basically it's not worth it. Yeah, and I think that was because it was before uh, the the scores were reviewed like computer uh, by computer or something. So it's like a lot more um, effective and efficient. But I ended up. Um, cause I told my manager and, um, his manager was like, Oh, can't she contest it? Like she should do it. And, you know, I was like, I went through the whole thing, like denial. I was angry. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Um, but then, you know, I, after accepting it, I realized, you know what? It was really just that one week. Like it's nothing, you know, it, it's fine. 74, you'll get it on the next one. Not a problem. So, um, and that's the other thing too, I think is important should do for yourself throughout the exam is being kind to yourself and say and telling yourself you know you have the tools um your material super fast cpa you have the tools to be able to pass the exams now you're going to use them and do your absolute best and be proud of yourself for even getting there i think that's really what happened after my little uh, my little tantrum over here. Um, I think that was really helpful in getting back on track for FAR. Um, you know, I, I I did go through the process. I did quote unquote grieve because like it was really um, it was not fun. So I took a little bit of time off and um, you know spent some time with my friends, my family, and then I I reminded myself like you did your best. You know just take another week and then retake it and you'll be fine. And I think I gave myself one week because in, so in California, you get nine months on your NTS. I signed up for all four. Don't recommend for most people, but for Mm. us, we get, we do get nine months. I planned on being done. I planned on aiming to be done in six months, but I gave myself nine months and I was really diligent about sticking to that schedule. So if you know if you're not like that do not recommend um and i think other states have only six months so that's my little caveat but uh i decided to jump back on onto far did it um did the review in a week did feel very nervous you know unsure of myself for a moment um as we all do probably before the exam but then i was like you know what you're going to do your best you prepared yourself, you did, you know, you did the work, you're learning. And by the work, I don't mean, you know, you put in the hours, I put in focused work. Um, I yeah. was, I was there to focus on understanding leases, um, for far the different types of leases, all of those questions that can come up on the simulation. Um, I put in focused work and, you know, I, I went into the exam that day. What I did on that day, I decided to skip the first question because the first question on, on the first go really <laughs> took me up. So I was like, I'm just going to skip the first question. They probably do that for us, right? Like a little something, something to throw you off. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I skipped that and then I went through and then I came back and answered the question and, um, you know, I ended up passing. It was, it, I was like, wow, like I did just need that extra week. Yeah. Um, that week. Yeah. <laughs> How long so, was your, you said you took a break after getting that score, like finding out you got a 74. How, how long was your uh, break you took? That break was about a month. Um, about a month, I would say. And then, and then the you week. came back and just studied for one week mm-hmm. and it yeah. all obviously came back and, oh. and then some within yeah. a week and you passed. Focus. I'm telling you, yeah, focus. It's pretty good. S- studying. Um, yeah. Did you have I, to work that week though? Oh Yeah. I was yeah. working full time. Um, okay. I think I gave it that one week. I gave it the time in the morning <laughs> and then more time in the evening. But I did give myself like the hour or two before bed to actually relax and um, and then go to bed. So I didn't, you know, do it all day. But one other thing, you know, with FAR, and I hope this helps other people, but when I got so in California, we actually get our score reports, whether or not we pass or fail. So I get to okay. see both, um, which I think was really cool because I'm looking at my score report. I see where um, I was weaker 
And I felt so bad about not spending more time on government. And then I get my score report and I look and I did, I did okay. I did comparable in that area. And then I look at the weight and it's only five to 15%. And when I saw that, and I look at the other areas that, that like, I think the highest one was like 30 to 40% makes up this one area. And that was one of the weaker areas. I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is weighted. So this one week, going back to the focus studying, focused, you know, strategic study, studying for that one week, I decided to focus on the highest weighted area, which was, you know, whatever area that was, select transactions under FAR. Um, and then the second most weighted area, because clearly I was okay with government. Um, and so I focused on those two areas and I got stronger in the highest weighted area and then comparable in all the other areas. And I actually got weaker on, on government, um, you know, for my passing score. But I noticed that like focusing on those areas, because I only had one week, I needed to get back mm -hmm. on the other two before um, my NTS expired. And I wasn't stressed out. Like I had, I had, uh, contingency plans for those, um, if that did happen. But I realized, you know, going back to that strategy, like looking at your score report, seeing, you know, what's, what's heavily weighted, um, and focusing on those areas. Cause I was weaker in those areas. And so, um, I did that for audit. Can't really do that for BEC cause it's all even <laughs> pretty even, um, between all of the topics, but it, it worked, it worked for me. So I had that part okay. of my review process. Okay, so in that week, um, or just kind of in general, just for the benefit of people who listen to this, so let's say, I guess, again, in any topic. So when you're starting on a new topic, and let's say one of the more difficult topics that's pretty involved. So you start with the questions. Mm -hmm. You go through, you know, whatever it is, you try to answer it. Mostly though, you're kind of learning from the solutions. Yeah. Um, if you're not getting everything you need from covering the questions, then you would go back to the lecture at that point, but then yeah. you have things you know what you're trying to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess just describe your process for a new topic, start, uh, start to finish. You're like when you said your focus learning, just what would you do for a new topic, start to finish? I would go through the multiple choice questions. Most of the time I would try to answer them, but sometimes, cause I noticed that, especially for multiple choice questions where they give you 50 questions, um, you start to see like the first 20 cover a specific topic, the next 15 cover a different topic and so on and so forth. And so I would kind of try to see what they're asking take the explanation with the calculation or whatever, apply it to the next question and kind of just build on that. So my learning was happening in the multiple choice questions. Um, and um, I, depending on how many, cause some of, some of the questions have like 60 plus questions. So, you know, I don't have, I mean, 60 questions. If you did a minute a question, that's an hour minimum, which we're not doing if we're learning. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would kind of look at the topics that were in there and then do questions from each of those areas and learn, get, uh, learn from the explanation. Because really, again, going back to what you're doing on exam day is answering questions. And to be able to answer the questions, you need to not only understand the topic, but first and foremost, you need to understand what the question is asking. You need to be able to read it and understand what the question is asking within, you know, seconds, basically, um, and then know what to do to be able to answer those questions. So that's really what I was looking for when I was going through the multiple choice questions is was um, what is the question asking? Like, here's the format. And I know some uh, some people say, look at the the call of the question, you know, what is what is the final sentence in that question? What, you know, what are you looking for? And then get the information, you know, FAR tends to be um, long winded question. And, um, and so I'm, I'm kind of looking for those little things in the question. And then anything I wasn't really um, understanding, assuming the lecture wasn't, you know, 90 minutes, I would go to the lecture. Um, and then just having that exposure, hearing it a different way, because you know, you're reading the questions, you have it in your own voice, reading it, however, hearing it from somebody else can help. Um, 
but I will tell you for far, I used academic support extensively. I think twice I, I um, accidentally found a mistake. You know, I was like, oh, I'm not understanding this. Is this correct? Am I, you know, I thought it was that. Oh, yes, that is, you know, <laughs> we need to update that. Thank you. Mm. Um, so utilize, like you have all of the tools at your disposal. You have your materials. You have, you know, super fast CPA. Within your, the materials that you choose, you have some sort, hopefully, some form of academic support. I know that people... Um, want to use the forums and the Facebook groups, but I found that using academic support, it was, it's tailored to you and they get back to you pretty quickly. I've gotten answers, you know, in an hour or less. Um, so I highly recommend using that. And then, sorry, is that, so just, I'm, I think I know what you mean, but yeah. is that a Becker feature where you can just submit a question and one of their instructors explains yeah. it? Is that what that is? Yeah, that's correct. So okay. if I'm in a multiple choice question and I'm like, so uh, in FAR, for example, I got pretty frustrated just because for some of the explanations, it's just a calculation. And for some people, you know, makes sense. That's fine. But for me, I wanted to make sure that I understood where each number was coming from, because every once in a while, um, there's a number in the calculation that has the same two numbers in the explanation, but they relate to two different things. So you're like, which one is it? You just want to clarify. Um, so I, I would just email in, in, um, in terms of Becker, I would use the academic support just to email. And it's really, um, easy because you're in the question, you just click that button and because you're in that question, it'll submit that question. Like you don't have to I say, see. this is question number. So, and so, um, super easy. So it's a great resource in, um, in Becker for anything that, you know, if you're struggling to understand something, um, or if you sometimes explanations have like this explanation, um, answers the question in this way with this calculation and this explanation answers the question in a different way, but it gets you the same answer. And so figuring out, okay, which one is more natural for me to use? And then maybe noting that, um, for calculation specific question, um, was a way that like I, I could pull f some of that information throughout. And it wasn't, I'm not taking notes at that point. I'm literally just applying it and seeing if it makes sense as I take the information from the explanation and apply it to the next question. Okay. I see what they're asking. That makes sense. Now I can go through the question quickly and understand what they're asking. And I know the calculation now and I'll apply it. Um, so that was the bulk I would say of my study. And if I still wasn't getting it, I would actually go to the simulations first, not the lecture. So, um, I went to the simulation for that specific module to see if, you know, um, listening to it and figuring out how, like the step-by-step -step process, um, if I can make sense of that and apply it then I feel pretty good about, you know, not having to use the lecture because that makes sense. Um, so they include the explanation, like the written explanation and a video explanation, um, which the which skill master, mm -hmm, the skill master videos. The Sims. Yeah, exactly. Those are really good in, yeah. in Becker. I, you kind of mentioned it, but other people have flat out said it They're They're lectures where it's just a voiceover of like highlighting the textbook not like super yeah. helpful, but the skill master videos are good. Yeah, definitely. Anyways. Um, okay. One other question I had about something you said, <clears throat> you said your first time around with reg 10 years ago, you mm -hmm. filled out a whole notebook of just, I mean, just notes just, on, yeah. on, on reg. Um, and then this time around, less than one notebook for all four sections. Yeah. So what, what led to that? Or like, wh what did you do differently? How'd you come up with the new note taking process or, and why was it so much uh, more concise, I guess? Yeah. Um, just, I guess the theme uh, here <laughs> was the focused, um, you know, being intentional about the notes that you take, or at least for me, because I'm a reader writer uh, that's how I learn. I, I need to read it. If I write it down, I'll remember it. So, and I think that's why I took so many notes. So, so many years ago was cause maybe I felt like if I wrote it down, I would remember it. But this time around, and I think it was after, uh, either the pro course or the webinar, um, where you covered like taking, making flashcards. Um, for me, the equivalent was taking note that that was my flashcards. Cause I was really 
uh, specific or rather really intentional about what was allowed to go in the notebook, I guess you could say, Mm -hmm. um, because I just wanted the one. I wanted to be able to go back and reference it during the couple of days leading up to the exam day. And I figured out that that process by my audit exam. Um, you know, I use I use my note taking to if I ever needed to make something make sense to me. So like lease uh lease accounting, for example, was probably one that I, I needed to write out and make sense to me. Um, you know, how I wanted to do the calculation in a way that could move me through the calculation and the question quickly enough. Um because like we just don't have that kind of time to go through all of all of the calculating, right? And so um what i ended up doing by audit um i would take like there's sars and like uh, all of the different um attestation requirements you know and and so what helped me was just to separate it see it visually okay this is this is um attestation this is non attest service services um seeing it like that and then a couple of other notes that i just wanted to remember because Honestly, I think audit is a reading comprehension exam more so than the other. You have mm-hmm. to really read the question and because you, you might know the material very, very well, but, um, you know, just reading the question. I mean, how many times have we read a question and we're like, oh, this is the answer, but actually it's not. And then we realized, oh, I, I misread that. Um, so I think audit is one of those exams that's like reading comprehension. So I really focused on, um, uh, being clear about this is what this is. These are the acronyms. This is how I'm going to remember them. And I had one page after I had my notes, I might've had like four pages of audit notes Had one page of like everything from those other notes that I wanted to specifically reference for my audit exam um, before I went in. And I did, I looked at those notes before I went into the exam. And I think three or four questions, were on that. And I actually had one simulation that had I not read that beforehand, I would have been like, oh, what was it again? You know? And I realized, oh my God, like that was my highest score. Um, I realized that having that in front of me in a clear and concise manner, easily digestible on exam day, probably made the difference. Um, My simulation score was the strongest there. I thought I wasn't good at simulations. Um, after seeing my reg and far passing scores, I was like, oh, I suck at simulations and I'm going through all of them. <laughs> and then for audit and BEC, I actually <laughs> just went to the simulations for, for like supplemental. Um, I, I, I ended up being more intentional about those. And yeah, just a couple of those notes on, on that review page for me for audit. Uh, was really, really helpful. Same for BEC. I only had, I had less than three weeks, um, for BEC. I, I had, um, I had lost my dog and to cancer and I had to really, you know, take a step back. I went, I went through a real grieving process at that time. Mm. Um, and I had to take a step back. And that's why, like, I was running against time at the end of it all, you know, like with my NTS expiring, but I was like, I got to do it. It worked really well for audit. Um, I found out doing the 15 multiple choice question from one module, uh, random, and then 15 multiple choice questions from the same module, but uh, adapt to you. So like personalized question was my 30 cumulative MCQs. You know, I would see what I needed to work on and then kind of look at what was um, the focus based on the AICPA blueprint. Um, and then get intentional about understanding the material from those areas. And I just, I, I can't believe I, I passed BEC with less than three weeks to study. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I was going to yeah. say, you must have, well, first of all, sorry to hear about your dog. That's Thank sad. You. Um, well, yeah, cause it was only a month ago. I sent out the email about, you know, signing up for the podcast if you passed yeah. recently and you had, so you must have gotten a score back right after that and then yeah. taken and gotten your score back in BEC in the last four weeks, basically, right? You yeah. just barely got your fourth score back. Last week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're still riding the high of, you know, being done. Yeah. I had a, I had a dance party after I found out. I was like, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> running across. I have, um, what do you call it? I have hardwood floors. So I had socks on, just like sliding across. It was great. It was great. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, my daughter was doing that last night, sliding like six <laughs> inches. She's like, watch this. Anyways, that's so hilarious. Much fun. She was doing it's that so just fun. last night. Yeah. yeah. Highly um, recommend each score. A little dance party. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. What else? Uh, so you said, again, with your, your notes, basically what you're saying is, because, um, yeah, the way I explain it in the pro course is flashcards. That's what I used and everything. But mm -hmm. really the key is you're taking things and you know i say the like capturing the understanding yeah. you're trying to okay what is this really about and how can i kind of translate this into my own way of understanding and you were just doing that with with notes you know you mm -hmm. you had your own process of doing exactly that same idea even though it wasn't exactly. flashcards yeah. Yeah. I try I actually tried it using um the Brainscape. Um mm -hmm. but again, I think because I'm a reader writer, like that's how I learned. Once I write it, I will remember it. Um and I do that like with people's names too. If I write it, I know sign language, so like if I write it quote unquote in the air, I'll remember it. I'll remember the name. Um and I think that's what works for me in terms of like flashcards, but using um my notebook. And I I really can't like I really, I take a lot of notes and I did 10 years ago. And now I, I, it's really weird to see that I, this person who's an avid note taker didn't even use up half her notebook, um, you know, for all four parts. So, um, if I feel like if I can do it and you're like an avid note taker, if you're just really, uh, intentional about what it is that gets to be in that notebook, because you're going to hopefully refer, uh, back to it um in the in the days leading up to the exam day yeah. and you just you just don't have time to flip through so many pages to remind yourself that that just gets a little overwhelming um as i'm sure it was for me when i when i first my very first time starting so many years ago um and then going back to it like especially for audit like i remember looking at my notes that day it was just one page one page sorry and um Literally, I think I, I must have had three or four multiple choice questions relating to those. And then I had one simulation and it was my highest score. So it's. Yeah, I mean, helpful. no, it's it's really valuable because, you know, if you think about it, it's the stuff that comes easy for whatever reason, like the lessons that aren't that difficult or you do some questions on it and it's like, OK, I get that. There's no reason yeah. to really take notes on it. So you mostly or hopefully only take notes or make flashcards on things that you kind of struggle to remember or understand and that's why you're taking notes yeah. so by the end your notes or your flashcards kind of contain your uh high leverage areas i mean everything else that came easy to you you kind of have it yeah and you'll do well on it and so yeah looking at that the last two days or I would always go to the testing center like two hours early and just do my my high priority decks like yeah. three more times and like you said I would just always see five to ten questions um, mm -hmm. that I had just seen in the car because of those flashcards so yeah it's worth a lot <clears throat> it's good stuff I mean honestly that's probably that probably could be worth you know five or 10 points right there, just doing that, being able to do that and not have to flip through so many pages to, to get through all of that. And it's not, it's also, I want to say that it's more than just, you know, there to help you memorize. It's truly there to help you understand and, right. you know, separate information that might be confusing, that might get mixed up. That's really what I was using my notes for, um, my notes or flashcards for was, being able to separate out information that I may have uh, actually misunderstood or, you know, thought, oh, I thought it was this, but apparently not. Let me get the right one down and make sure that I have it um, so that I can remember it for the exam and not get that mixed up again. Really easy to do in um, in audit with the SS 
A R and S S A E, like that's probably yeah, where a lot yeah. of people get tripped up. And and I know, um, you know, I started using the um, the outlines more for audit and BEC, and I think that was really helpful. The outlines in the um, in the super fast app, and it was being because at that point I was actually matching up what I was learning with the AICPA blueprint, which is how you have it. Um, uh, set up yeah. in the outline. So that was actually really helpful. Um, and I realized that, you know, you're just saying, make these, m make it make sense to you. Um, you know, it's not a matter of memorizing for the sake of memorizing, but if you think through the questions, if you think about um, what the information is saying, you know, you can kind of figure out, like, sometimes you have to make an educated guess on on the exam. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I'm, I made a lot of educated guesses. <laughs> on BEC, um, you know, to, to really utilize the time, um, for the simulations and the written communication. Cause that was, that was, that's a new, um, the way that it's broken up, broken out is different from the other exams. So I was like, I need to get through the, the multiple choice questions so that I have enough time for the simulations and, and the, um, written communication. And I think I submitted it with like, 10 seconds left to go. So I was really glad I <laughs> got to make the educated guess and go. And sometimes when you walk through these um, questions and, and come up with an answer that makes potentially makes sense, sometimes you have only a little bit of time to make an educated guess. And again, going back to got to do your best. You have all of the tools, um, you know, at your disposal, use them, trust that you've given it your best and really be proud of of the work that you've done to get there, whether or not you get a passing score, um, it's hard work and not everybody will understand what you're going through. Um, you know, maybe some people won't support you through it, through, through it all, through it all. So it's, um, you're your biggest cheerleader and, and your biggest motivator. So it's, um, it's a journey. And I think having super fast CPA really, really helped me. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, it's that's awesome that you're, especially the BEC to fit within your nine months NTS. You just um, went for it, and obviously, you were just at that point. I'm sure you were just thinking, "Well, I'm just going to take this because yeah, that's the last few days of the NTS, and we'll see what happens." Yeah, and uh, yeah, also yeah, it was. A different strategy for that one too and you know hey some some of the processes will work for some um exams and maybe not for others depending on you know the timing i know some people have busy season some people you know life happens right so um figuring it out along the way is also part of this journey because again this is self-study you're coming up with your own curriculum and it's up to you to stay committed um and be consistent with it yeah and it that is uh that is something that's just people don't really think through all of that like you said when you when you're in college you show up two to three times a week mm -hmm. a professor is kind of guiding you through the material um coaching you on here's what's going to be on this quiz or like whatever and with this it's not only do you have to learn all the material yourself but just the whole discipline like how you set up your day when you go to bed yeah. kind of like determines if you can even get up and study or, you know, there's all these things. It kind of just has to be. Um, and like our approach, our big claim is like you get your evenings back, you know? Yeah. But that requires like a highly disciplined approach starting at the very beginning of the day, two hours in the morning, mm -hmm. do your little mini sessions on your phone and, uh, more or less you can be done and at least have a few hours every evening to take a complete mental break. But getting there kind of requires that you, you cut, you have to nail it each day. Yeah. 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 Consistency is key. <clears throat> um, so your final, final review, how long would you save? I know you said you saved two weeks for far, but then one week got cut off. Was two weeks yes. kind of your final review? That's kind of what you would aim for on each section? Actually, no. So I didn't know about the final review uh, for REG. I actually just had two or three days 
And because I realized too late going back into the Becker um, course, it's like you two weeks before the exam, take this uh, sim simulated exam. And I was like, oh, um, it is two days before my exam. I got to <laughs> take this right now. Um, and so I did. And even like for someone that may run out of time, like I highly recommend just submitting the simulated exam going through the questions like if you don't have time to yeah. do it submit it just go through the questions and try to an maybe like cover cover the the answer and like try to answer it yourself again having that repeat exposure is is like it really can be the difference between you know passing and not so um for reg i had days for far i lost my review week i actually gave myself uh just over a week but i wanted to review uh government um and then by the time yeah and then i found out that i i had work travel so i lost that week um but honestly for the retake having that one week i think was more than enough it was it worked out really well for audit um that was i want to say also about a week and then um for bec i actually studied from the final review and then i really did First week I did final review, and then second week I did multiple choice questions in the in the format that I did, fifteen and fifteen per module, and then focused on the areas that um, were heavily weighted based on the AICPA blueprint. And then the week of the exam, um, I did I did more of the same, focused on those those um, what is it, the corporate governance, like the one with all of the crazy acronyms really long mm -hmm. 17 principles whatever uh oh, and, yeah yeah <laughs> and um, ERM. yes coso um yeah. and then i so yeah so i went back and made sure to have that down because i just didn't want to try to sit there and remember in the middle of the exam um and then i also went through a couple of simulations i know that ratios was a big thing i um i actually used a um, so like universal CPA has a, uh, exam day, like this is what tends to be covered. And so I just use it the week of my review. Um, and I noticed for BEC ratios were covered. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do simulations on that. Make sure. And I got a ratio, uh, simulation on my exam. Um, so again, going back to being really intentional and focused on what it is that you, you study. I mean, you have again, you have all of the, the resources at your disposal. It's not about, you know, consuming everything that you possibly mm -hmm. can with, the, you know, the materials, the supplemental material, you know, and if that works, like, that's great. Um, but I think, again, going back to what you're what you're trying to do is understand it, um, understand the material and be able to apply um, your understanding and your knowledge to to the exam. And if not, being able to have the confidence um, and trust within yourself to make an educated guess because we don't know everything, but we got to try. We got to keep moving forward. Yes. And I would say that uh, when you spend most of, again, when you spend most of your study time doing what you'll be doing on exam day, you just get good at yep. those things, MCQs and SIMs. And then you just have a lot higher when you do have to flat out guess you're just your odds are higher just because you're i don't know there's just little things little nuances you pick up on doing so many questions yeah and that being like where you start with each lesson um the other thing i was going to say is i can just tell you were very strategic you would just think strategically about yeah. every little thing like doing the questions or when you would do sims, which sims you would do, looking mm -hmm. at your school report or the blueprints, what's more heavily weighted. And when it came down to it and you had to make decisions of like, okay, I could study this or this, this is 10% of the exam, this is 30% of the exam yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah. That's just another big point that uh, is hard to, I guess, be strategic is a good tip, but it's very vague. But when you're strategic <laughs> about every part of the study process, you just gain all these little advantages, you know, yeah. whereas, again, I think just kind of the traditional study approach, that's why it's so easy for some people to 
put in four or five hours a day for months and they're still failing because it's just, you know, yeah. press play on the video. Yeah, you. I guess technically you can say you're studying, but it's it's not very strategic or yeah. it's not very high leverage to do it that way, you know? Um, yeah, and that's just something everyone has to kind of figure out is taking the – just being proactive. Every hour that you sit and study, like what's the most strategic, highest, and best use of my time based on mm -hmm. where I'm at, what I need to cover, what I'm still struggling with. Yeah, that's just yeah. – uh, I mean, you gave a lot of practical tips on how to do that. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, – I can see why you passed hearing you yeah. talk about how you studied. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you you planted the seed in, in my head and I'm sure you've done that for many of us. Um, and again, it's a matter of figuring out what works for us because every, every, everyone's situation is different. Um, and I'm, I just can't believe like I'm actually, I was actually passing. I'm like, Hey, I'm doing this now. Why was it so hard 10 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was going to ask you that. I know we're past an hour, so I'll, we'll okay. wrap this up, but, um, yeah, so you had your first first attempt to kind of compare it to when you watched our webinar, watched the pro course videos, and then you started studying. Did things, did the whole process click for you relatively quickly, or was it your, until you got your first passing score that it kind of confirmed, okay, this, yeah. this works? Yeah, I think it was the first score because, uh, you know, I'm sure I'm sure we all feel some kind of way after leaving the the testing center, you know, whether it's like, oh, I definitely didn't pass or I think I passed. Um, I think for me, my first uh, attempt was I really don't know. Um, and I think after getting that passing score back, I was like, OK, so this works, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, let me, let me apply it to the other ones. And like, I will be done. I literally, again, decided to even take the CPA, not even a year ago. And I can't believe I'm here just over nine months later and I'm done. Like this works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So going along with that. So the last question I always ask is, <clears throat> Um, I'm sure we already covered these in at some point, but what would be your top three tips to people that are, you know, still trying to nail down a, an effective study process? Yeah, um, I would, number one, from my experience, I would say assess, assess your situation, your environment. Are you set up for success? Because I was not 10 years ago um, in my situation having to work those 10 to 12 hour days i i really wasn't um and that's okay you know the cpa will always be there you want to make sure that you have your um you know your biggest cheerleaders after yourself of course but having that support um you know sharing with the people that should know or need to know right hey i'm studying for the cpa um you know i i really want to focus on this this is important to me and if it's not your time that's okay i i feel like i i am proof <laughs> that um right out of college was not my time um and i'm here now and i'm, I'm glad i i decided to do it now because i don't know what that would have looked like then um but it's it's okay it's okay to wait um, you know, if, if you're pushing and you're not at least accepting the process, not necessarily enjoying the process, you should enjoy passing though. Um, but take a moment and, and make sure that you're set up for success. First and foremost, I, I would, you know, we've got, we had the pandemic. Um, I'm sure lots of people recently had layoffs. Like it's okay to take a break, you know, assess, um, when is a good time for you to take the exam? So I would say that that's my tip number one. And then um, my second tip is, is if you can make a plan and stick to it, that I think is a huge differentiating factor in passing, uh, between passing the CPA exam and not. I've seen some people, uh, you know, kind of, and, and sorry, in my, um, when I first started 10 years ago, Oh, I study kind of whenever. 
And I see look now looking back, like that was not going to work. Um, mm -hmm. again, you are your own professor. You are making your own curriculum. This is self study. So it will help you, um, in staying consistent and committed to learning the material, getting yourself set up to pass the CPA exam. Cause I think once you utilize your tools and you're strategic about it and you stay committed to, um, your your own curriculum your own outline um i think you know that that really helped like i had to switch it up for each each um exam and yeah not every the first process that i had for reg would not have worked for bec um so in the same way that you work out you do it every day you find a plan and stick to it um it's not going to happen overnight, whatever your workout goals are, right? Same thing for the CPA. Um, and then I know I mentioned a couple of tips earlier on being strategic about, um, you know, utilizing those resources and tools. Um, so like some of the multiple choice questions, splitting it up, looking at the AICP, AICPA blueprint and seeing what's heavily weighted, I think can really help with um you being focused in your strategy and especially during review week. Honestly, I think that's probably what helped. Um, looking at the AICPA blueprint for each exam and seeing what's heavily weighted and maybe utilizing um, your review week to focus on those heavier weighted areas. Because um, I, I found that that's what's the most tested material, right? Going into ex exam day. Um, and then my last tip I would say is having having um having the right mindset being kind to yourself as you you know go through this journey i think having after after failing far my first time right um i bought these little stickers that said um i'm going to pass all four parts of the cpa exam and like there was one sticker that had like little box boxes i was like i checked for reg and then I, i'm like i'm gonna do it for far gonna do this for audit gonna you know so having those little things that when you're unsure of yourself you can just look at um i think i wrote a few times throughout my journey like i am a cpa um you know and i have passed all four parts of the cpa and it feels incredible whatever now being on the other side it just feels like unbelievable <laughs> you know yeah um and actually saying that right and i will say as part of mindset skip the first question if you're stumped on exam day if you feel like oh my gosh i didn't study this or whatever just skip the first question i'm pretty sure that they throw the first question as like you know let let's like they're just like let's see what we can do you know <laughs> um see if we can throw off these candidates <laughs> Yeah. I think it helped me. Um, yeah. So those are all my tips. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I really liked what you said. It just, uh, just very focused, intentional studying, or it's like, it's, it's like work, you know, you're, yeah. if you're doing this correctly, you should be active. You should hardly ever be sitting, just staring at your computer for longer than like three minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, you're either working problems or taking notes on something or reworking a solution. It's kind of hard to go wrong if you're like actively forcing information into your brain um, <laughs> every hour that you study, you know? <clears throat> yeah. I liked what you said about making, making the material make sense to you. Um, you know, the way that one professor or one lecturer might explain the material or whatever or in the explanation right may not make sense to you i think that's also another one i want to throw in there is, is make it make sense to you if you can explain it to someone else and they can understand it it makes sense to you you'll be able to utilize it for the exam and i think you've mentioned that in the pro course especially going over the flashcards um that one's that one's a good one really good one yeah yeah, kind of like you said with your notes, it's just this process of when you come to something that's challenging for you to understand, if you can get it to where, yeah, you can put it in your own words or another way of saying that is if you could turn and teach it to somebody else, yeah, then you kind of have it and that's what you make flashcards on or 
diagram and you know your notes or however you do that part but it's uh yeah just the process of taking challenging things and understanding them to where you could explain it to somebody else that's yeah. huge and that just unlocks your ability to answer any questions you might see about that topic um obviously Definitely. yeah I feel like we're on a journey okay. of becoming uh, as much of an expert in the area as possible. Just right. enough to pass the exam, though. <laughs> yep. Study to pass. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting a Ph.D. No. Um, so one. So sorry. Last question. One feedback yeah. question. What was your uh, what was the overall most helpful thing about super fast CPA and kind of adding it to your study process? hand down the multiple choice um going through the multiple choice questions first like from day one when you do that you are applying what you're learning in real time and then by the end of your study um session um you know over however many weeks for whatever cpa exam now you can just read the question and apply your knowledge and get it done and move on and have all the time in the world to be able to do the the simulations. I think going about it that way is what really unlocked um, probably even my thinking about the strategies, like what, there's so many questions. What questions do I cover? What in the world do I do with my um, review week? Um, I think that's what really, really helped. And then having the exposure throughout the day using um, using the app, like going through the multi, uh, the mini quizzes and then um, referencing the outline. For Reg, I used the audio notes a lot. Um, hmm. And then for FAR, I went through the outline. For Audit and BEC, I think I, it was just outline and then mini quizzes throughout. Um, I think, again, because I'm a reader writer, that's what worked for me. I know one other thing I recommend is like knowing how you best learn. If you're a visual learner, if you're, uh, I guess, kinesthetic, like if you need to work out while studying or whatever, uh, reader, writer, right? Use um, the tools that make sense for you. But yeah, the question, going through the questions first and like learning from the explanations and the simulations, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. Why aren't we studying from this? Should we even have lectures anymore, right? Like, <laughs> um, that's what unlocked it for me, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the strategy is the overall biggest thing. And then I think our, our study tools just kind of help you implement some of those strategies, but absolutely, it's definitely, yeah, this is just like a black box, endless material to learn with your, the time constraints or whatever, how you do your day is up to you. So yeah. it's all about being strategic. Um, Definitely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, sorry we went over, but I appreciate okay. you taking the time to do this. Uh, that was really valuable. And yeah, just like you listen to the other episodes, this will be a really valuable episode for, you know, some percentage of the people that listen to this will just directly connect to some of your ideas. So, Hopefully. and I'm, I'm glad you found us. I'm glad it made a difference and congrats on being done. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, it Thanks is so awesome. I wish yeah. I could relive that feeling. It was like three months where I was like, just tangibly, uh, not, not high, but <laughs> like a tangible yeah. just sense of relief for months. High on life. It was just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just yep. couldn't believe it. I, I was just like, like mouth agape, eyes wide, like. <laughs> I did it. Like, you know, it was, it wasn't anything. I thought I would cry or something, but I was just like, that happened. I, I'm, yeah. I'm done. Like, I'm done. Um, it was, and then I danced, you know, had a little dance party after. I think it was like 10 or midnight or something. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a journey. And, and it's almost really... weird the next few days to not study, you know? Yeah. Cause it's, it becomes like a big chunk of every day and then it's just not, you just don't have to do it. It's almost weird for a while. I'm saying yes to more things now. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. yes to all the things. I'm like, yeah, I yeah, can, for sure. I can do that now. So yep. it's been great. Yeah, that's Thanks. awesome. Thanks for all the tools. Yeah. Yep. I'm glad it helped. It's, I mean.
All right, so that was the interview with Janice. I'm sure you found that very informative and motivating. And just to see how simple this process can really be and how quickly it can work once you get your daily study process and the study strategies figured out. So if you found this valuable, please take a second, share it with someone else you know who's also working on their CPA exams. And it would really help if you took a second to find the podcast in Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to this or on YouTube, leave a rating and review. Of course, if it's on YouTube, the best thing you can do is like the video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment about one takeaway you got from this interview with Janice. So thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.